forget the northern star we're looking for the next star for eurovision in the beautiful israel we are down to four they are maya buskila kobe marimi shafita and katria ketria and somebody's on the phone is that is that israel calling is that israel calling in any case are you guys ready to talk about it let's, let's do it Guys, let's take this in turn going through each of the four finalists in the next star for Eurovision for Israel. First up is Maya Buskila. She's a big deal. With over 15 years of experience. That's 15. Okay. Other singers weren't even walking when she was already a celebrity. She's got two massive massive hits in Israel that everyone knows. Four parent albums. You hear her songs at the cafe, at the beach. I bet you hear it in synagogue. She is everywhere. She's incredible. I have to say, she, I'm surprised they haven't internally picked her, you know, sort of over the years to kind of represent Israel. Because she's quite something. Did you see her version of Polina Gagarina's Million Voices? I didn't like it. I felt like she was shouting at me, to be honest. But first, let's have Angus chime in on Maya. Yeah, I mean, I think she's definitely a big belter. Like, she has a huge voice. Um, I actually just think that A Million Voices itself lends itself to shouting, though, because I felt that in the live performance in Vienna. It's quite like a yelly, sing it out, sing it. Like, that, that's the point of the song. That's the nature of it. Um, so that song, perhaps not the best to show off what she can do. However, she clearly has a huge voice. I do get quasi Annie Lauraki vibes about her. She's from that school of like diva that does the big, soulful, powerful notes. Um, it, but I also, A, the thing from that performance I noticed was diction relative to the other three. There were a few problems there. And also, I think the other thing, when you have these huge stars that have gone for so long, to Devon's point, it's kind of like, why hasn't this already happened at some point in the career? And why is it coming back through the talent series? She has a huge voice, um, which would probably lend itself well to ballads. But Israel has not done terribly well with female-led ballads of late. I and mean, you look at, like, Rackbish Below, did not qualify. Oh, for a beautiful song. song, though. Beautiful song. I mean, it was. But if the whole point of the game is to get out of the semi-final, beauty is immaterial. Um, so I just... Uh, yeah, Maya, fantastic voice, got career experience, would know what she's doing on stage with Belter, but I think the key thing here is you've got to be memorable. That's the whole point with the host nation, the problem you have. You look at the make makes, you look at Claudia, Pascal last year, Otorvald. If you fade into the background, everyone forgets about you because of the host country, so it's not like a point of difference. And just, I, as yet with her, don't know what Israel would do with her talent to make her stand out in the field. However, she clearly is hugely talented and experienced and knows what's going on. Her Before performance, she ate, can I her just performance say? of Rise Like a Phoenix was amazing. That's what I want to say. Give her the right song, she can slay. And they will be giving all of these artists a tailor-made song after the artist is chosen. So I just want us to keep that in mind. On the diction point, she said, we are the world people. It's like, you can't be doing that, okay? You gotta it master this English. We are the worst people. It's still not on point. But at times, I actually think her voice sounds very thin. Sometimes it just sounds thin to me. And I know she can sing. They just need to get her in the right register where she can slay. Deppin. I'm sorry, I completely disagree with you, William Lee Adams. You like famous people, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Eight entries have been selected thus far. If she was... In that mix, she's definitely my top three. I think she's brilliant. I really think she's With good. what song? Or obviously not with a million voices or with Rise Like a Phoenix. What I mean, with her capabilities as a singer, I think she's excellent. She looks great. She sounds great. She can rock a ball gown with a huge bow and a long train. She's got all those qualities I look for in a Eurovision performer. Or in any kind of music star, actually, as a matter of fact. I think she's really credible. The My only concern is, 
they've narrowed them down to four people and she's competing in a really tough field. So, you know, there is doubt as to whether she'll actually advance to Eurovision, but then there is doubt on all four of them because they're just all very good. I think she's amazing. Don't get me wrong. I like her personality. I've watched clips of her. She seems like the gay man's best friend. You know what I'm saying? She is the diva we want to be, the diva straight men want to be with. She's ticking all the boxes for so many different people. Why did she like holding hands when she was singing, actually? LGBT icon, no doubt. Beautiful person. But we move on. Next up is Kobe Beef Marimi. Kobe is calling. His audition, his very first audition went viral. He is so sensitive. He has this vulnerability. You just want to hug him. I think he's better with ballads than upbeat. He covered Fuego. It wasn't a fire. It was a Japanese barbecue grill. Okay? Like how Ariana Grande messed up her tattoo. This was not fire. This was a mini Japanese barbecue grill, okay? And again, as one of you just said, Israel tends not to do well, Angus, with ballads. And so the question becomes, oh gosh, do we give this great ballad singer a ballad? I think he does well with rock. He did one entry. I can't remember what it was. But he knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Didn't which like was, it. Oh, wow. That blew me off. It just blew me out of the water completely. But Angus, it was your turn to speak. I mean, I will say on Kobe, which a lot of male performers don't get right in national final season, he can control his falsetto and hit the notes when it's in those higher registers. He doesn't have a problem doing that. Yeah, it's a huge soulful voice. It sounds very powerful. Again, I have ballad question marks about Israel because, I mean, Harel Scott was the great hope and then Malim came mid-table. Kobe Star a few years ago, again, made it to the final, but did not kind of challenge the upper echelons as you might have hoped that he would. Um, so, yeah, I think he's got a fantastic voice. There's a lot of soul to it. You could do a lot with him, um, for sure. And I know that, like, he's been one of the underdogs of a competition. Like, he's been knocked out. He came back for a wild card route. So there's some survivor instinct there that appeals. Um, I just, again, in a similar way to Maya, I don't know what Can would do with him to make him a success for the grand final, less than the host entry that gets forgotten in the mix, if you see what I mean. So... Well, Ina Babayeva didn't get forgotten. And can I just say, he's the Israeli Freddie Mercury fact. He, he looks good, he styles very well. I, I think he can work minor chords beautifully. <laughs> there's something about him, when he sings, there's a sensitivity there, and there's a yeah. sincerity there. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm just really touched by him, and I think he's got gripping stage presence. Really, I think this year's edition of Next Star has to be the best in Israel that have come forward because I'm really struggling with this final four. I think they've all got something. It's interesting. You mentioned Sabina Babayeva coming fourth in Azerbaijan when they were hosting. And she sang a song that was very Aziri, traditional instrumentation. These were sounds organic to her her country and were recognizable to us as coming from the region. Angus, to your point, when Israel does well, they're doing something other people perceive as Israeli. For instance, um, Golden Boy. Boy, that Mezrahi sound. Um, who was the... Netta. Yeah, Netta, and also in 2017, uh, uh, Imri. Again, all of these songs did well, and they had what we would call an Israeli sound. Mm -hmm. And so I think Israel does good with upbeat numbers that acknowledge, you know, what they're very good at, which is that Mizrahi sound, which we just can't do over here. So work with what you have, get what you want with what you have. And to me, that means maybe Kobe's not the best because he's a little stiff. They need Don't to loosen him up. Him out. Don't skin him out. Honey, we beat from the same heart. I'm not skinning him out. If he loosens up, maybe he can deliver something more upbeat and exciting, but it would also feel slightly inorganic to him. Um, in any case, we need to move on to the next act. By the way, I love Kobe. Can I just say that? I think Kobe's amazing. I think all of them are amazing. But we're in the final round now, so we've got to be cutthroat, okay? This is not the time for miscongeniality. This is the time for hard lessons and hard facts, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, do not roll your eyes unless it is with love for Ketria, Katria. 
Our girl is 22 and she is a black Hebrew Israelite or simply a black Hebrew or black Israelite. These are groups of African Americans who believe we are Yes, descended from the ancient Israelites. She's got a strong identity, a strong connection to Israel. I didn't know much about this group prior to this, and so I think this is really interesting just, just to have her in the contest educating all of us about this group of people. But long story short, she can sing, Rise Up. Rise Up. She killed him. Rise Up. She reminds me of Janelle Monet, actually. Mm. That kind of soulful, you know, multiple threat kind of pixie diva. She's she's just her range is just amazing, and when she sings and when she emotes all that emotion, oh my god, you just feel so charged up. I was getting goosebumps. I was getting emotional. I was getting teary. I was just kind of like, oh wow, 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 take me now, and in a remarkable reversal of my scores, she now tops my league. I think that Israel should send her. I think she's totally amazing. I think she's also incredibly versatile, is the thing. Like, having discussed the previous two, she covered Wings by Little Mix and did a great justice, was very upbeat. So she can do the upbeat bangers, but she also can throw out a whistle tone and just Mariah Carey up the big ballad. And also, like, Alicia Keys, that nice, like, jazzy type sound. I think she's fantastic. It has a lot of soul to bring to the competition. So she'd be... A fantastic choice for a job because she like you can visualize her also doing an upbeat in the style that they've done previously. She has that. Whereas I think with Myron Kobe, it's going to have to be a ballad in those cases. I think for me. Whereas I think Katria, you could do ballad, you could do upbeat, you could do mid. Like there's a lot they could do with her. Ketria kills it. Look at her styling when she's saying "Rise Up." The shimmering black with the sparkles, the pink eyeshadow, the gorgeous, gorgeous headpiece. Amazing. She looked fantastic. She looks like a pop star, frankly. She looks like a pop star now. Doesn't need the makeup. She can do it on her own. Versa- she looks divine. She yes. actually looks divine. Top, bottom, forget it. Versatile. It's all about versatility, and she is that versatile artist, Angus. That is the perfect point. Our girl could slay anything, but Beyonce, Janelle Monet, Netta Bartzile, she's bringing it all together. Can I also say, Dare to Dream as a slogan has been unveiling itself as an immigrant story. So you have Bilal, who is a sort of like a Muslim, you know, almost kind of trans-identifying gay man, you know, representing France and Israel. You've also got uh, Mahmoud from Italy, you know, he's from, you know, Milan, and he's also got Egyptian descent. And I think that it would be great to have her, you know, kind of rewrite the whole, well, maybe not rewrite, but just kind of like shed light on her community and what they do in Israel. You know, kind of saying that Israelis are also of a particular dimension. You know, Israelis are many kinds of people, and actually they are. And, and I think it would just make a really powerful, strong narrative to have her represent Israel, in addition to the fact that actually she is also slaying on every level. It's not just about the narrative, it's about the look, it's about the voice, it's about her passion for music, it's about what she emotes, it's about her sense of being, her spirituality, her youth, her exuberance, her her vocal range. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> blows it out of the water final point for me about ketria is that she was the most consistent performer on this edition of the next star for israel nothing phased her she worked the genres she made them her own some of the other acts it often felt karaoke like cover acts i mean they often they all had strong points but one or two weeks they'd be like "Ooh, karaoke cover she was never a karaoke queen she was always making the songs her own. Yeah. That rise up, I'm sorry. She could have released that as her own single and would have gone to the top of the jars. All right. Anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah, yeah. All right. We move on to the final act. Now, this is a controversial one. This is Shafita. Now, Shafita is actually a character, an exaggerated Arab diva from a land called Dubai. That's kind of like how Linda Woodruff says Azerbaijan. And she got stuck in Israel. So she's got a very heavy accent. Her behavior is at times vulgar. Um, this is a joke 
act, but she can sing. However, for me, the joke doesn't translate to English because we're not experts in various Middle Eastern countries or how Israelis perceive them and vice versa. So I think it's like an inside joke to people from the region. But those of us on the outside are like, what the heck's going on? This woman is just silly and can't sing. Because she can sing, but the character can be so distracting when she's trying to be this Shafita, Shafita, whatever her name is. I personally don't think this should go to Eurovision. I don't think this would do well for Israel. I like her spirit. I like her humor. I like that she looks like the beautiful actress Marley Matlin with the glasses, but I'm just not feeling it. I actually have to totally disagree. I find her really captivating. Um, I like watching the performance, getting the quirk. Like, she's quirky. There's something about her. And actually, I thought of the four of them in the running, having mentioned Mizrahi, she was the only one that I could kind of visualize going for something sounding a bit more ethnic and keeping with the kind of sound Israel goes for. You know, she's Merrill, she's quirky, um, like Lioness, I think. Was like the most recent one she's done that performance I found that quite captivating good I liked that I got into it um, and I think joke actors may be the wrong word because it's a character performance it's not like uh, she's doing it to take the mic or make fun like it's not like some of the songs that United Kingdom has sent in the past Is that she are like, she's you know, more Linda Woodruff than yeah. just Turkey yeah exactly Exactly. That's exactly the point. And just, I thought she was very good. For me, she's in my top two of Katraya. I like both of them. I think I would be a plausibly good choice. Her quirk almost took me in mind of Netta. It's that flavour of something different. Whereas I think the other three are much more kind of down the straight and narrow. And they're quite, like, set. You can sort of make sense of it. Whereas this is a flavour of something different. And you sometimes you Metsa. You want a Metsa. You want different things at your Eurovision. Sometimes when I'm at a restaurant, I see something different and I steer well clear, okay? The other day I was at a Chinese restaurant, they had pig snout. I ain't gonna eat no pig snout. Give me my dim sum, honey. I do take your point, though. In many ways, she's a breath of fresh air. She is a breath of fresh air and she seems likable, which is a huge point in her favor. For me, of the four remaining, she is probably my least favorite. However, I don't dislike her by any means. I think she's actually quite a good, strong contender. She, she, there's a believability in her. That she, she has this sort of fantasy element where when she's thinking, she kind of grabs you into her world and you're just kind of fascinated and quite gripped by it. And you don't realize that this is, there's comedy kind of driving this. So, um, Lioness was the one that I particularly liked as well, where she was over and over exaggerating the words, and it had all those arm movements coming out. She understands theater, she understands staging, she certainly understands characterization, and you need that for two weeks of Eurovision. You know what? Israel is down to four solid acts. She is a worthy contender for the next star. They are all worthy acts. We've agreed on that. But we're going to cut back all the pleasantries, y'all. The time has come for you to reveal your winner in Israel's The Next Star for Eurovision. You can name one act. We start with Angus. Oh, well, I was kind of hoping you two would go before, so I would be the note of difference. But I will go out on them and say... Shafita is it something different and memorable. I think Katreya is very credible and there's lots of ways they could go with her. The other two have stuff going for them, but I think Kobe and Maya are out for me because I think that means a ballad, which, as we discussed, is not necessarily the best. Editor. And yeah, I, something about Shafita just struck me as being quintessentially Israeli. Like, I felt a very strong, I don't know, cultural nod that you would pick it out in the 26 songs on the night of the final. And yeah, my whole point with Host Nation is memory. You have to be able to remember them. The Host Nation acts that you forget about, like they don't cut through on the night. You look at someone like Lena or Sabina Barbieva, they cut through because they were memorable on the night. They made sense. And I think Shafita has that memory factor to her, which is important. Like you wouldn't forget she'd been on in the night is what I'm getting at. Um, memorability is good. But Ketra doesn't have the gimmicky element. So I'm going to go with her because she's also quite memorable without being, com you know, comedic or gimmicky. So Ketra for me, 
without repeating what I've said before, she is the full package. She's got the X Factor. She's the star and the star of Israel. Um, everything about her nods to a fantastic um, result for Israel. I think, you know, quite often um, home entries really kind of struggle, you know, because they, they, they do become part of the big five for that one year. And, you know, people tend not to vote. Ireland being the exception, but yeah, I kind of feel like Israel could could turn the tide if they pick her. I think that she will give Israel a very very good result, and I think she can sing anything. Mm -hmm. okay. Descended from the ancient Israelites, a daughter of the Promised Land, returning to the Promised Land to slay for Israel at the Eurovision Song Contest. My vote goes to Ketria Katria. Ketaria, however you say it, our girl slays. Her performance of Rise Up really won me over. I mean, it swelled, you know, it just swelled with a thousand voices, a million voices, in fact. I'm voting for her. And also, she's a native English speaker, so she would slay the promo tour. She would communicate her message, the message of her song, beautifully. I like all of them, though. Honestly, I I'll be happy no matter who goes, just to be honest, because Shafida... Um, if her humor can translate in English, that'll be a welcome breath of fresh air. Because, you know, at Eurovision, a lot of acts do take themselves very seriously. And I think she would be taking the piss out of all of us all the time. You know what I'm saying? She would loosen everybody up, which would yeah. be a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Um, in any case, that is what we think. What do you think of these final four? Who deserves more? And by that, we mean a trip to the Tel Aviv stage. Let us know here on WeWe Vlogs. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments below which of the Fantastic Four is your favourite to win the next star. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us on multiple social media platforms. We'll see you later. Bye! Toda! Mazel tov.